So how would you maximize this function? Maximize integral 0 to infinity. I'm going to restate it just slightly. e to the minus rt, v of k of t, minus, I'm going to translate, what is i equal to? Well, what is the amount of investment? Well, that's delta k of t plus k dot of t. Right? Everybody agrees with that? That is gross investment, which is i, is delta k plus k dot. Okay? Because k dot, remember, k dot equals minus delta k plus i. Right? So therefore, i is equal to delta k plus k dot. So now let's look at what's the first order condition to this problem. Does anybody know how do you maximize a function of k dot and k? Well, you remember the way to think about it is you can't think of k and k dot as independent choice variables, right? Because if you choose k dot, you've kind of chosen k. Like whatever k I started with, if I choose a path of k dot, well, that determines k. Right, because once I if once I fix the initial condition, once I choose a k dot at every date, I've chosen what k is going to do. And it's nice to think about k dot as your control variable. That's the way people talk about it in these dynamic control problems. K dot is the thing I'm going to choose. Think about an economy. I'm trying to maximize this function. Each date, I'm going to choose a k dot. And what's my first order condition going to be? Well, think about it. Let's assume. I have some candidate optimal path. This is k of t, some candidate optimal path. And I want to know what's the first order condition for that problem. In order for that to be the optimal path, what must be true? Yeah, that any variation of k dot is not going to make me better off. And since I could make k dot go up or I could make k dot go down, the derivative with respect to k dot better be 0 at every date. Because if the derivative with respect to k dot is positive, then I should increase k dot. If the derivative with respect to k dot is negative, I should reduce k dot. Of course, taking account of the fact that changing k dot changes k. Right? I can't change k dot without changing k. So think about it. What if I was to raise k dot at one point in time? Just, just invest a little more at one date holding k dot at all the future dates fixed, what would happen to my path? How would I perturb my path? If I increase k dot at one date, and then what I would do is I would pay the cost of increasing k dot at that date, and then I would get a little bit higher path. I'm trying to draw this parallel, but my, my drawing ain't so great. I would get a little higher path forever, right? I would, because I'm holding k dot fixed at all the future dates, I do a little more k dot today, I'm going to pay the cost of increasing k dot today, and then I'm going to increase my k forever, right? Everybody understands what I'm, the experiment. The experiment is, I'm going to invest one more unit of capital today, and then I'm just going to keep that extra unit forever. And it better not pay to do that. But it better not cost to do that either, because that's got to be the first order condition for k dot at day two. Okay? Well, because I'm, I'm holding up, we can do it both. You can do it either way, right? There's, and that's going to be a nice way. We're going to go there next. So this experiment is an experiment where I'm going to hold future k dot fixed. What does that mean if I'm going to hold future k dot fixed? It means. I'm going to have to not only invest more today, but in order to hold that extra unit of capital, I'm going to have to invest a little bit more every, every year from now on. In fact, and we'll see that when we do the first order condition, right? Look at what's the first order condition going to be for that. Well, at date t, I'm going to increase k dot, right? So I'm going to get a minus e to the minus rt c prime at t. Right? C prime evaluated at t. Everybody agree with that? That's the cost of increasing k dot. That is, I'm going to pay c. It's a negative because it's a cost. That's what's going to do to mine. But then what am I going to get from then on? From date t forward, I'm going to get e to the minus r tau. 
and what am I going to get? Well, I'm going to have extra k. I'm going to have, if I did one more unit of k dot, I'm going to have one more unit of k. So I'm going to get a v prime, okay, at tau minus, I'm going to have another unit of k, delta c prime of tau, c tau. 